Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani. Welcome to Study IQ, and I welcome you on the uh, daily news analysis of the Hindu newspaper in the morning. Today is Monday, and Monday, uh, the energetic day. Start your week with your energy. You see, when you go with the energy, everything looks possible. The whole world looks possible. Nothing uh, frustrates you. You know, this is the scientific fact. And when you are not energetic, okay, then even thinking about something becomes a burden. Uh, you can any time check this thing you are depressed go out and run for five minutes and then think about something else then you will feel that anything looks possible to you and you don't feel stressed so that's the great power of energy is and uh, you see when we are stressful when we are negative always we tend to think what if i fail and in this examination every day is uncertain and uh, every, every day becomes negative some people around are like this they make you negative but don't think what if i fail a lot of people a lot of very successful people they have applied this thing they instead of thinking that uh, that what if i fail they thought what if you fly what a great sentence said by an anonymous writer don't think what if i fail think what if you fly okay why to think bad why to lower your energy because thinking impacts your energy and always always start by positive thinking thinking about very very ambitious targets so that you are full of energy now today's monday many many articles are there so much information today is there so this uh, lesson is going to be huge so don't get frustrated because a lot of information is there bring in the experts it is regarding the jalita's death and the controversy removing the fear it is regarding the private members bill regarding the literary freedom and the cbi and the rules of political combat very very important article regarding the autonomy of the cbi and uh, other and india's options and pashtun factor a very informative article by a uh, veteran writer okay a very informative article it is uh, telling about the whole history of taliban and afghanistan what's going on what india should do why the us withdrawal is happening and all these things he is discussing and one article we won't be discussing today i will discuss it tomorrow because so many articles are there uh, this lesson won't be uh, completed so that's why i'm doing that first article armoga swami commission probing jalalita death armoga swami commission is probing jalalita's death we all knew that and uh, what is the controversy that jalalita's health was okay it was said that it was okay and uh, it was not much an issue but after that suddenly something happened and the political scenarios were going on all kinds of speculations were going on and she was very very popular she became very very uh, intensive in her, in her political life at that time so at that time suddenly this happened and she fell ill again and once the news came that uh, she is going to be uh, healthy very very soon but suddenly she died so this happened and the complications developed and she uh, died so regarding that it is said that it is alleged that something wrong happened okay ministers have called for a probe in her death and you see when any fa famous personality die like this so always controversial controversies they erupt and a playing ground for such theorist has been ripe and it is unfortunate if somebody is dead for more than one year now and uh, now the conspiracy theories are coming and the probe is ordered there and this uh, armogami swami, swami commission is uh, probing this now the issue of circumstances and situation leading to her hospitalization this is the main focus and the allegation on this commission also are going on that they are not uh, doing this thing very uh, in a transparent way things are not clear and the hospital management and the staff they are also not giving right information they are not revealing all the details medical records and all they need to clarify because without understanding of the medical condition of jail alita where she was uh, having a lot of troubles in uh, her body so without knowing about all of them no conclusion can be drawn out of this issue and uh, they said that it was inappropriate treatment that led to her death and that was intentional but uh, nobody knows the truth and the probe is going on next article regarding the removing fear and on literary freedom you see a lot of things are going on on our uh, public sphere political sphere and not in just india uh, in whole world you in uh, uh, Europe a few years back in France you must have heard about the Charlie Hebdo attack and uh, a lot of journalists they made a cartoon and uh, Islamic 
फेनेटिक ऑर्थोडॉक्स पीपल दे दो टेररिस्ट दे किल्ड ऑल दीज पीपल इन अ वेरी हॉरिबल एक्सीडेंट एंड नॉट इट वॉज नॉट एक्सीडेंट इट वॉज अ हॉरिबल मर्डर सो इट स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम देयर द स्ट्रीक इज गोइंग ऑन यू सी खशोगीज मर्डर एंड इन इंडिया ऑल्सो इन टू थाउजेंड एंड फिफ्टीन द गोविंद पंसारे काला भुर्गी गौरी लंकेश ऑल दीज किलिंग्स वर बिकॉज ऑफ देयर लिटररी एक्सप्रेशन एंड देयर वेरी अग्रेसिव स्टैंड अगेंस्ट द अथॉरिटीज अगेंस्ट सम एस्टैब्लिश ट्रेडिशंस सम टेबू थिंग्स विच वर देयर विच दे टॉक्ड अबाउट एंड ऑब्वियसली दे वर पुटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ लॉजिक एंड आई ऑलवेज से दैट this is totally wrong this is the threat to the expression always two groups are there one group say that we uh, uh, are a free people and constitution gives us all the power to express freely but the other group would say that your power is not absolute and you cannot do anything in the name of freedom so both are right but there should be a middle ground and that can be reached only with the peaceful discussion and peaceful discussion should be supported by some law so for that this private members law is coming and the bill is proposed but hardly any private member bill is passed it becomes an act but obviously it opens a great debate a nice logical debate and that is the thing you see if somebody is doing something wrong somebody is saying something wrong on the social media in the books and novels and all then always there is a logical path to Uh, the counter argument and uh, you may take any legal action if somebody has done something really really wrong because people may be mad people may make mistakes so it is not right that you kill them it is not appropriate nowhere nowhere the death or uh, sorry the murder can be justified the way they were justifying the gorilla language murder uh, on social media and all so for all these issues the literary freedom is taken for granted in democracies but forces that threaten or undermine it always at work and you see only those authorities are going to work against these expressions who are threatened otherwise i always say that if somebody is confident about something somebody th th thinks that i am uh, right and it is not uh, appropriate some for somebody to criticize this thing because i am doing uh, my thing uh, logically and with all honesty then there is nothing to be afraid of let them criticize and uh, things will be uh, will be proved because the truth triumphs uh, okay the satya meva jayate is the phenomena but only that person is afraid of the criticism of some kind of revelation who has done something seriously wrong or maybe people are not able to uh, change themselves in a right way progressive way in the society and still they are following some traditions of medieval times and all uh, regarding the issues of uh, castes intercaste and uh, some uh, conservative ideas and all so all these things are taboo for our society sometimes so these uh, logical expressions should be heard and if they are wrong maybe uh, that that people who are writing they are not writing everything right but it is logical to listen to them and give them a uh, nice reply and in the logical way only okay so in the recent times several attempts attempts were there where books were withdrawn and all ak ramanujan's essay 300 ramayans uh, ramayanas were, was dropped from the delhi university syllabus and the wendy donager's uh, controversial uh, ramayana book okay that was withdrawn and uh, tamil writer perumal murugan's very very controversial book of uh, madhur rubagan one part woman was withdrawn by the author and mob pressure but resurrected by madras high court so court gave it the legitimacy so that's the thing and you see public order national unity and social or uh, religious harmony are the principles commonly invoked against the practice of literary freedom with the name of uh, national unity order and all you see these things are genuine if somebody is seriously threatening the uh, national order or the national security then certainly that said that person should be contained but there is a way constitution has given us a lot of ways to tackle that in a legal manner right manner but it is not right that you target those people on social media by your it cells and all and uh, it is done by all the parties okay this thing is seriously seriously uh, unwanted and social media platform is really dangerous it becomes a targeting hub 
and uh, those people who express who think something according to their mind so if they express that and if that appears on the public domain this becomes a huge trouble for some people and they are not tolerant to these ideas and they take extreme steps so that's the thing so threat to free expression okay that should be uh, a given a support and people should not be afraid to say even something logical in today's environment if i uh, talk to you then certainly some things becomes very very scary if you t say something like that if you if you want to if you can prove some things which are seriously seriously wrong and bizarre even those you cannot say maybe some uh, against these are some against uh, authorities or they are criticizing the government or they are criticizing some other person some other group some other caste some other religion so that's why uh, it is not a very smooth situation so that's the thing in this context sashi tharoor congress mp and uh, the writer has introduced a private members bill okay in lok sabha but hardly uh, they are passed but one issue is there it is not about uh, bringing this bill only sometimes people are like this they are very selective in things okay and uh, that's also not uh, totally appropriate so it is not about somebody who is bringing this bill and all but this bring uh, this uh, bringing of this bill is appropriate okay because this expression logical expression or the thoughtful expression should be uh, without a fear okay and liberal values should be upholded and today the thing which is at most danger which is at the target of these extremist groups those are the liberal values okay and it has become a abuse to call somebody liberal or something like that its objective is author must be guaranteed the freedom to express their work without fear of punitive action by the state or by the section of the society and next article 290 sorry the section of 295a it talks about and uh, they are saying that it is a proposal that there should be a omission of three ipc sections 295a 153b and 153a 295a they, these all may be asked in the prelims examination as an options 295a is a grossly misused section problem is not that these sections are there these sections are okay their intention is okay but the issue is that they are not competent a lot of misuse is uh, happening of these sections that's why it's uh, it's need to be discussed and often invoked in a trivial ways to hound individuals harass writers and curtail free expression you see one more important thing is happening when some writer is uh, saying something like that then the mob targets that person that person is alone and that is whole mob the whole community or the whole uh, social media users but they don't think that that person is alone so safeguarding is required here and section 153a is regarding if somebody promotes enmity between groups on grounds of religion race or language then that's intolerable and uh, that person can be punished but that's okay that's fine that there is nothing wrong with this provision but the misuse happens okay they distort the meaning so that's the thing and uh, wrongly they put in different situation so their problem occurs the misuse is the problem and misuse of the 153b that criminalizes words and imputations prejudicial to national integration very very genuine issue national integration that should never be compromised but you see when they misuse they will misuse in a situation where there is no threat to national uh, integration or there is no threat to the state's idea but they will apply this they will criminalize the uh, person out of the interpret wrong interpretation of the section 153b so uh, these are the proposal proposals that they should be discussed and uh, it is regarding the uh, ban on the books also and uh, the scrapping of the provision in the customs act also because a lot of books a lot of expressions a lot of documentaries and all uh, they are imported they are not uh, originated in india so regarding them also the banning and all these uh, procedures should be discussed in this bill and it wants to limit the bar on obscenity also in the information technology act it act to child pornography only so the bar and the limit should be there till here only okay so that thing should also be discussed that obscenity levels uh, where till where they should be allowed because these are also controversial things on the basis of these allegations violence happens so that's the thing next private bills rarely become a law as i told you 
and it would be a step towards removing or diluting the penal provisions that inhibit liberal uh, literary freedom okay so that's the thing which are inhibiting the literary freedom that should be safeguarded that is the gist next the cbi and the rules of the political combat cbi most controversial organization it is said that it's a parrot of the central government whoever government is there whoever party is there in the power it is working according to that when it started it started by taking the powers from the delhi special police establishment act 1946 and from it it takes power but in the starting officers were, were very much uh, honest dedicated impartial and all professional qualities were there but that started eroding in 80s and today this is the situation uh, people used to say that if something is not being resolved then give this issue to the cbi okay then the justice will be delivered the truth will come out but now the situation is like this gone are those days where people were believing cbi now cbi is totally under political control it is said it is the the allegation now year 2018 is hopeful but emergence of two interrelated threats to india's federal polity you see why federal polity you see there is the there is the issue of tussle between the central government and the state governments okay state governments are not allowing cbi inquiry in their territory and uh, that's how cbi inquiry is impossible and same implies to the national uh, uh, the investigation agencies and all their state government cannot stop them but the cooperation is not there so that is the issue so india is a quasi federal state okay india is uh, there are a lot of states but it, these are not uh, united states like states these are not autonomous states they are not having their own citizenship and their own laws and all we are having uh, seventh schedule where list system is there the union list is there where union uh, parliament can make laws on and uh, after that there is state list there is concurrent list so the power is divided and we are a quasi federal state with an inclination towards center so we are not totally like usa and we are not totally like uk where total centralization is there so it's a very great system very uh, collaborative system and cooperation the word of cooperation is the main idea okay without cooperation india's state cannot work it will never be uh, working as a country without cooperation but this cooperation is in under serious serious threat and pressure you see in a lot of states there are allegations that center is imposing a lot of things and uh, center says that these are not complying these states are not doing uh, justice they are not going good governance so it's a great issue and you see always center has an edge and it is suggested and it is according to the rules that states should comply with the central's ruling otherwise it would be a problem for the states administration that can be diluted okay and there may be uh, provisions of uh, president's rule and all, all these things are there certainly are there but the trust of the people is also important but the tussle tussle is going on okay the way we saw the example of west bengal and andhra pradesh in both the states the cbi inquiry they were not allowing where the center was wanting the cbi inquiry in some matters but they were not allowing so they when they were not allowing it was not possible so the political class remains oblivious to this great threat to our federal polity they are not uh, in a way uh, supporting the idea of quasi federalism and the cooperation they are fighting with each, with each other and they are completely out of the political ambitions they are completely allegation uh, 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 putting allegations against each other and they do, they both want the harm to the other the first threat according to the writer is that the nation, national investigative and regulating regulatory agencies such as central bureau of investigation are increasingly seen to be unmoved of the well established bureaucratic professionalism and neutrality means the professionalism and the neutrality was there but today the issue is like this that it's under immense threat the professionalism is eroded and these officers and the staff as i told you the cbi like uh, organizations they created their status their great respect out of their professionalism and the dedication of these officers but that is under serious threat most of the people they are corrupt 
and uh, recently we saw the incidents where top officials were fighting and it was not decided that who is honest and who is not because we don't know these things needs uh, these things need a lot of uh, uh, evidences and all and evidences are influenced always so state level agencies apart from them state level agencies may be far worse in a condition but that is a different matter but about these institutions it's a great great threat and you see out of political control they are working because most of these pro corrupt people they had done something wrong in the past they had done something unprofessional and that was not honest so that's why they are under pressure and they are working according to the authorities and the political executive it is the allegation now the political political impact of this sentiment whether it is true or false is the refusal of some states governments to permit the cbi to conduct its operation in the states as i explained to you gone are the days when people would demand a cbi probe people are no more trusting cbi and that's mainly because of the erosion of the professionalism of these staff and the honesty of the officials one cannot ignore civil society's lack of confidence in the agency's competence and neutrality that's well known second threat is political to our political system is the increasing tendency especially among the two national parties to not only implicate each other's leaders in litigation but relish the specter of the other having to spend time in courts or in jail the both want to see other behind the bars they both are consistently in this war one uh, the way we can take the example that there rafael deal is there that is the allegation against the uh, present government and national herald case is against the opposition so these are the examples they both are trying very very hard that other person should be silent and that should comply and they both want to see the other person in the court or in the jail but out of this india is at great great harm you see the condition today that is uh, portrayed here by the writer that our political space is turning into the moral universe of buck grangford what is the moral universe of buck grangford where mark twain says one is only certain of the other being one's mortal enemy but one's not sure of what the feud about means i know that i am enemy to that person and the other person that also knows that i am his enemy but for generations we are doing like this or maybe for a long period of time we are doing like this but we don't know actually what the feud is all about so this is happening with our political parties one is fighting with each other uh, and the other one but they don't know what is the feud about so this is the situation and this moral relativism is corrosive and dangerous for the whole federal polity of india this is happening they are in ever going struggle and on anything whether whether something uh, does something right or wrong but they will criticize they will fight and they will try to let the other person down so this is happening in our country now this is happening with the center and the states and this cooperation is disturbed now political adversity turning into personal enmity very easily it is uh, turning into personal enmity they are not new but they like a disease have entered a critical phase and you see that's why uh, once uh, the chief minister chief minister of uh, andhra pradesh he was uh, a great friend 2 3 years back for uh, prime minister but now he is totally opposing the idea he has become the leader of the uh, this particular opposition front okay so this thing is happening and these are the personal enmities which are actually scaring the india's cooperation in the federal polity and now see nobody can say who is wrong who is right but this is happening that's evident cbi will have to obtain the state's consent case by case this will uh, give a state government the opportunity to both ensure that the cbi is not acting at the behest of the ruling party at the center or insert its own politics into investigation so that needs to be curbed down and the agency may technically go ahead with cases it already registered in the states but that logic holds only on paper you see the trouble is as i told you when states are not going to allow without a state government's active cooperation 
नथिंग इज पॉसिबल नो वर्किंग इज पॉसिबल ओके सी बी आई तो इज लाइक टोटली इम्पॉसिबल वेन स्टेट इज नॉट अलाउिंग इन इट्स टेरिटरी एंड इफ इट इज रिगार्डिंग द नेशनल इन्वेस्टिगेटिव एजेंसी विच वर्स फॉर द काउंटर टेररिज्म ओके विच वॉज स्टार्टेड आफ्टर द मुंबई अटैक्स ऑफ टू थाउजेंड एंड एट so there there is no bar and it is not mandatory that if state does not allow state has no power okay in nia's investigation it is regarding the terrorism and it is the national issue so there is no power of the state to stop nia from investigating but if cooperation is not there from the state side then the justice will never be delivered and the truths will not come out okay and practically this whole exercise would be a failure so this is the tragic moment for cbi which has had its root as an anti corruption wing of the british indian government at that time it was started for anti corruption measures and known as delhi police establishment act a lack luster name till 1963 you see you see sanathan committee came and it gave it report in 1964 after that the uh, cvc and all they were uh, started and that from such humble origins it rose to national eminence was a tribute to its competence and professionalism but that we don't see that is not evident today professionalism is gone and what's new what is the new that political equations between the states and the ruling party at the center these are not right okay you see the example of andhra pradesh and west bengal where this is happening and not the cbi alone other agencies are also affected by this enforcement directorate nia etc all these uh, are this whole exercise where uh, center was doing something like that where control was visible on these bodies it started in 80s in the jnk uh, state where some people were raided income tax raids were there which were the people who were close to jnk's government and center was having a different government so the, uh, the same government was not same party was not there in power in states and the center so there were raids and this whole issue started where political executives control was visible on these bodies who should work independently without any bias and total professionalism should be shown but now the trouble of missing cooperation state governments have exclusive jurisdiction in the matters related to law and order law and order is the state subject for the states but the center can claim its jurisdiction over its departments the way railways are, is there and the issue of terrorism sedition counterfeit currency in these issues center can interfere but even in these cases central agencies cannot discharge without active cooperation of the state so this is the thing consider this for example unlike the cbi act the uh, the uh, dsp e act the nia act does not place such a restraint on the nia but again without cooperation no work can be there and dialogue required the solution is dialogue should be there our federal system is so far as it is concerned with the national investigative and regulative agencies worked well due to two reasons in the past why this thing was smooth why the working was not under that much stress because there used to be a single party both in states and center mainly the congress party was there so that time this feud was not there but today it is established that regional parties are there and uh, the governments they change alternatively the way we can take the example of rajasthan state where one time congress comes after that bjp comes again congress comes so this political control is not consistent so this can be a great opportunity for these institutions also that these governments are going to change so we should not fear so ultimately if they improve their professionalism if they improve their uh, impartiality if they improve their courage then certainly game changing uh, uh, results will be there will be seen easily seen and uh, you see professionalism and impartiality these only factors would be there which will lead the future and the uh, uh, trust of the people that would be intact and today india is witnessing a revolving door politics means governments are changing consistently these are not permanent no government is permanent so that's why uh, this way there is this can be a great opportunity for these institutions like uh, rbi cbi uh, cec or the cag this is opportunity for these institutions they can work in an autonomous way if they are courageous and if they don't do anything wrong if they don't they are not corrupt then certainly they will bring great results and this way 
we have to ensure india's constitutional scheme which gives us all the solutions of the all the problems of the country okay everything is given in the constitution if we interpret it right and if we imply this scheme so we have to deliver and we have to maintain this promise now the way ahead arrive at a modus vivendi what is modus vivendi means establish a particular culture establish a style lifestyle for day to day working where corruption is not there an elected executive should be refrained from monitoring investigation the laws should be made like this that elective executive is not having much control on the working of these uh, autonomous institutions otherwise certainly it will going to be a problem because most of the governments they are uh, not honest governments okay most of the governments are not honest and this monitoring if this will keep happening then certainly these organizations will not work in a fair manner so uh, recommendations are already there they should be implemented and political executives control should be go uh, should be gone away next effective judicial oversight should be there and their working the courts working should also be very much impartial and bureaucratic neutrality is the main idea that can save everything next restoring credibility it's not a rocket science simple it's not a rocket science we have reached up to mars cannot we solve all these problems we can solve all these problems but in the self interest of all political parties it's also in the self interest of the all party political parties it is not like that that uh, uh, they will be troubled if uh, these people in the cbi and all they become impartial or professional it's not like that they will not be troubled it will be in their interest certainly because things will improve and they will be working with much more efficiency and ultimately this aura ambience environment that has been created of resistance between parties and all allegations are there so working is never smooth so that working will become smooth if this become happen if uh, this keep happening like this in a positive manner and time is right you see there should be positive discussions when we are uh, going to vote for the next government then certainly these kind of discussions these kind of issues should be raised in the public domain so the best outcomes are there before us okay next india's options and the pashtun factor next great article very informative article pashtun factor factor pashtun is the population a tribal group in afghanistan more than 40% population is there and it is saying that the situations are changing us is withdrawing so india need to uh, follow its own creative policy we should not look towards us iran or soviet uh, russia so uh, that there can be a solution we should go according to our own way now to understand all these situations we need to go into the history of the afghanistan i show you the map here you see afghanistan situation is like this it is a landlocked country and the issue started during the british period when india was a colony and it was india till here okay out of the uh, threat of afghanistan and all they created durand line here which is today between pakistan and afghanistan okay so pashtun population was living here 40% more than 40% population was there so demographically it was dominating the area when this durand line was created then most of these populations most of these areas they came under pakistan's territory so at that time this tussle started between afghanistan and pakistan areas that time it was not pakistan okay i am talking about uh, 19th century so that time it was not pakistan it was india but you see what happened after that conventionally or traditionally if we talk throughout the history pashtun population uh, used to be the ruler here in this area but the kazakhstan here and kazakh people are also living in afghanistan and these people are no more educated kazakh people are more educated but afghanistan's population of these tribals or pashtun tribes they are not much educated they are more involved with the, uh, the drug peddling and all opium uh, farming is the main uh, occupation here in afghanistan in the hilly areas so they are more involved in these kind of businesses they are not in much education and the kazakh people they are more in education the uh, mainly the officials and all in the government they are kazakh population people okay so that's the situation so it started during the british time 
and Afghan Taliban. Afghan Taliban, which is now politically ruling the northern area of Afghanistan and de facto ruler they are at that, that particular area. Not the whole country of uh, Afghanistan they are ruling, but they are uh, certainly uh, in a way creating a lot of disturbance for the government and governance is totally impossible because of Taliban there. This Taliban does not represent in a distorted form a facet of Pashtun nationalism. Taliban was never representing Pashtun nationalism at first. Before 90s, it was not doing that. And it used to be a Pashtun Wali. Pashtun Wali means Pashtun people should rule and the people who are coming from outside, they should be opposed. They should be kicked off out of this area. So that was Pashtun Wali idea. Opposition to foreign presence because they used to be more than 40% in the area and uh, based on base this on the history of the past 300 years when Pashtun dynasties ruled Afghanistan almost throughout the history okay so now Persian speaking Tajiks as I told you who are forming around 25% of the population okay they are more into government and all and now these Pashtun, popula Pashtun populations they don't like these people because in government they are ruling the population of these Pashtun people and uh, traditionally it used to be the rulers these uh, uh, Pashtun people used to be the rulers now the situation, situation is changed when this situation changed this situation changed when in 2001 American invasion when happened after the World Trade Center attack these Tajiks mainly supported Americans against these Pashtun terror groups okay these Mujahideen groups and these terror groups which were there on the northern Afghanistan area at this area so when Americans attack attacked this Tajik front that supported America in containing these Pashtun population so this situation changed totally changed and after 2001 Tajiks are in much dominance but now what happened Taliban is again rising so Taliban is scaring these Tajik people. This is happening. And locus of power out of Pashtun hands shifted. Okay. Now, if we go back, emergence of the Pashtun Taliban from Kandhar. You see, uh, in the Kandhar area, Taliban was not in much more, much more uh, uh, prominence before 90s. In 90s, what happened? These people used to fear Tajiks. Pashtun people and these terror groups they are belonging to Pashtun tribe and Mujahideens which were created out, uh, out of 1979 Soviet invasion that happened in Afghanistan after that these Mujahid, Mujahideen groups they emerged in the Afghan situation now they were fighting a lot with each other so situations were not in Pashtun hands these people were fighting and Tajiks were getting education and they were dominating. So Taliban thought I should come into the picture and I should become a leader here. So at that time what happened? Pakistan's military helped the predominantly Pashtun tribe. In 90s Pakistan's military helped Taliban. So Taliban was raised by the Pakistan's military in 90s and uh, they imposed a degree of order and ruled approximately three quarters of Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001. Okay, you must have heard about the 90s uh, scenario where pe uh, people uh, uh, were living in intense pressure under Taliban rule. People were shot uh, on open streets, on the roads and uh, Sharia law was uh, totally imposed and that was very harsh law and total radicalization was happening in 90s. So that was all Taliban's deeds and uh, Taliban ruled for five years from 1996 to 2001 till the attack happened on America. Okay, this happened. So why this situation emerged? To know this, we again need to go back to the uh, 1979 situation. What happened at that time when Cold War was going on? So Soviet Russia that invaded Afghanistan in 1979. So at that time, America, America started giving support and training to these terror outfits. Okay, those were Mujahideens and they, these Mujahideens were fighting with uh, Soviet uh, Russians. Okay, so the support came from America for these Pashtun tribe 
okay and saudi support was also coming saudis they brought ideological support ideology of wahhabism that is extreme islamic ideology before that islamism was not that much uh, into the pashtun people's mind but extreme islamism came after the saudis wahhabism emergence after 1979 okay so the whole idea where they were totally subscribing to the pashtun tribal uh, dominance these pashtun people that shifted from tribal uh, population to, uh, uh, towards the islamic terrorism okay and they were radicalized totally after 1929 so whole pashtun population was radicalized after 1979 79 okay so it was support of americans and support of saudis okay they were providing training they were providing ideology and when the struggle is going on people are in war situation ideologies work a lot okay so that happened so this wahhabi ideology produced uh, they started madrasas and these madrasas produced the first generation of taliban after 15 years okay so taliban rose around 94 and this was the year of 1979 so around uh, 15 years it took these madrasas took and they raised the generation of taliban so after that taliban took over afghanistan okay and it was totally based on the radicalization okay and pakistan and the pashtuns pakistan's relationship with pashtun nationalism from hostility to support it changed when this wahhabism came and pakistan was also totally a country uh, started on the idea of religion okay islamic radicalism so now it became a common thing between Pashtun population and the Pakistan uh, country and the military. So this religion became the joining thread and they both became friends, the Taliban and Pakistan. Before that they were not friends. But in 90s they became friends and Taliban regime established in Kabul in 1996 with the Pakistani military's aid and until 2001 it went on. And religiously inspired manifestation of Pashtun nationalism largely solved the problem of Pashtun irredentism with Pakistan. Means at that time, where in the starting Islamic radicalization was not there in the Pashtun population, it became main idea. The religious radicalization became the main idea of the empowerment of Pashtun population. Okay, so this happened. And now the divided and informed nature of the nominally ruling dispensation, the government, Afghanistan government, which is corrupt and inefficient and people were totally miffed with the government. Okay. In the starting people did not support Taliban. In the starting people did not support Taliban. But after that what happened when they saw the government as corrupt and inefficient and it is not uh, trying to save the people. People were dying every day on the bombings and all. So they started supporting Taliban. Now Taliban is ruling the people and Taliban is uh, politically very very strong. It is stronger than the government. That's why this situation has come when America has to contact Taliban separately for all the situations and they are ignoring the government. This situation has appeared now Taliban is very strong okay and even after a presence of 18 years and when Pakistan did not support Pakistan uh, actually supported Haqqani network and Taliban they strengthened them against America okay so because of this situation it has become an embarrassing situation for America and the peaceful exit is not possible and that's why America is wanting India's intervention in Afghanistan so this is happening and it's a total defiance of Kabul government now okay next resurgent Taliban is driven not so much by Islam today the Pashtun dignity and revenge again this is this thing is taking strength and Taliban when uh, it is again uh, raising its control over the territory then the same situation which was there in the 90s it is expected that the, this, that situation of 90s will reappear in Afghanistan if this situation is not solved this US withdrawal which is happening now it is creating a vacuum for Taliban and Taliban will fill up this situation and again the 90s situation will reappear here this is expected by a lot of scholars okay so that's the situation and now they are economically very very capable because they are controlling the drug market of Afghanistan because opium trade happens there so drug trade is in Taliban's hand so this is the situation and India should form its own policy now it should not be dependent on iran uh, russia or uk or usa and 
India should form its policy. Why? Because India has lost some support or some trust of Afghanistan in the past. What happened in the past when Bangladesh was formed? At that time, Russia supported us totally, military-wise, uh, Air Force-wise, every uh, at every stage, Russia supported us. So at that time, what we did, we actually did not criticize Soviet invasion of 1979. Afghanistan said that criticize this move, but India did not criticize only uh, India denounced this mildly. So that's why Afghanistan went into the hands of Pakistan and uh, it became close to Pakistan. And that was the time when Taliban was rising and it was totally a Islamic radicalization time and Pakistan became friends with, with Afghanistan. But today the situation is totally different. Okay, so we may gain ground again and the world is totally different now. And it will be foolhardy if we became uh, if we become dependent on us or any other power we need to create our thinking create our uh, uh, new diplomatic fashion and we should proceed according to that okay you see a lot of articles are there and these are very very important information today uh, we cannot ignore these facts and we need to understand them and this is very very informative article so it is taking a lot of time next india's atlantic challenge Trump's America first policy and the Brexit deal could pose more challenge this year. Why? Because lingering concern is that the choppy waters of Atlantic Ocean may throw up many economic challenges. Why the situation with the USA and UK that is totally going in a negative way. UK is totally mired with the Brexit issue and they are not able to solve it. USA is uh, going against globalization totally trade protectionism is happening with the trump administration and the people who started globalization they are actually campaigning against the global globalization now and country like india which progressed because of this globalization and our trade share is very high in the world trade now we are totally affected by these negative developments internationally okay us president's america first policy is harming us because uh, trade wars tariff wars are going on country with uh, countries like China and all they are having troubles with USA and not uh, just China we are also having some troubles uh, recently uh, America put some tariffs on our steel products and all okay so as a tit for tat policy we also imposed some tariffs on America's products okay so this tariff war is started with India and America also, not just USA and China is going on like this. India and America are also like uh, going like this now. And this thing may impact our security scenario with USA because Comcasa and uh, 2 plus 2 dialogue, all these happened in the recent past. And we were very happy uh, with the friendship of USA and all. But if these trade wars will go on, then certainly these things will be impacted. And for the UK, it's a hard Brexit and unexpected complications are going on. We need to uh, discuss the free trade agreement with UK and uh, European Union both. Okay, so this situation is totally out of the box now. Okay, nobody's discussing this because they are all are busy with their own issues and we need this actually economically European Union, UK and India all need these free trade agreement, but it is not possible because of these ongoing situations and trade experience of 2018 uh, shows us that India US trade relations are not going in, in a good direction okay we uh, these uh, developments are totally disadvantages for india these sanctions network which is going on and uh, escalating tariff between us and its three main trade partners eu china and nafta and now this thing is happening with india uh, with the new delhi and washington also these tariff war and all so this show of strength against each other is not going to be fruitful ultimately we will be having a lot of troubles and our prime minister modi ji also raised this issue in davos where world economic forum uh, was happening and he talked about trade protectionism and he said that it is a worrisome trend if america will keep doing like this it, this is going to be uh, not going to be good for the world and certainly country like india who are actually developing and this stage is uh, very crucial for them at this stage we do cannot afford these kind of situations with these kind of negative developments so we need to go against these trade pr protectionism and globalization should proceed in a smooth uh, way okay and it could easily spin out of the control situation for India because 
if these kind of developments will happen then certainly america is very smart a nation okay and already scholars are saying that we should not uh, go too much according to usa because usa is not a reliable ally that's the thing and it can create rifts in other areas like security and diplomacy if these trade wars are going on we already uh, had seen two three years back the issue of uh, the solar panels and all their uh, uh, their manufacturing issues and all and there was a dispute between india and usa and we lost that battle okay so again this situation is going to benefit china you see this is a multipolar world and when two people are fighting the third one is taking the advantage so china already uh, is at loggerheads with USA but certainly it will be benefited out of this situation where India and uh, America are also uh, in a fight of tariff war okay so that's the situation and with UK also as I told you they are having a deadline of March 29 for Brexit and uh, we all need to negotiate this free trade uh, framework okay free trade area issue and it can be an opportunity for India also. It can be opportunity. If we manage the situation easily and this Brexit happens, then it can be beneficial for us also. How? Because at that time, we will need to clear the situation. We need to deal with these uh, bodies separately, separately with UK, separately with EU. Okay. So at that time, it will be an easy deal for us and it will be a beneficial deal for us because they both will try to give us a good deal better deal so that time it can be a great opportunity for opportunity for india so it all depends on india's ability and it, india's diplomacy and some uh, uh, small news some uh, uh, petty information is there uh, mr rana okay uh, tahawul hussein rana he was a main accused in the 2008 attacks okay usa has said that his extradition is not possible till 2023 because he is undergoing uh, uh, for a 14 year jail term in America and he was a main uh, accomplice of David Coleman Hadley who was the main conspirator of 2008 attacks okay so that's the situation next Polavaram Dam it created a Guinness record for uh, uh, putting concrete in a single day maximum amount of concrete in, in a single day and Polavaram Dam as I told you it is there on the Godavari River and the interlinking project of Godavari and Krishna is also uh, at a proposal it's a prakasam barrage on krishna river and it is polavaram dam on godavari river and the joining is proposed here and godavari river rising on trimbak plateau in maharashtra near nasik and uh, making a boundary of telangana and maharashtra and then uh, the rivers like indravati are joining it from here sileru sabri is joining it from here here uh, the rivers like uh, Van Ganga, Pan, uh, Pan Ganga, Van Ganga, the Pranhita, all these rivers, Vardha river, they are joining it from above, from below the Manjira river. So these are the main uh, tributaries. Look for all of them. Kodavri river is very, very important. It is having the uh, biggest basin area in peninsular India. So the river, this river is very, very important. And railways has proposed a move like airports where security checks would be there. So we may need to arrive 20 minutes earlier. And that's the situation next the uh, india is going through the liquidity condition liquidity constraints are going on so when market in market the liquidity is less then what rbi needs to do rbi needs to infuse money into market how it is going to do it is going to do by open market operations what are open market operations where rbi will buy government securities from market and they will pay interest and the money to the market so the money will come into market if liquidity rises in market then rbi will issue securities and it will take money from market and securities will reach up to rbi so this is the situation this is open market operation a very effective monetary policy tool okay earlier the crr slr these used to be the um, uh, policy tools but now open market operations and laf are the main uh, uh, po policy tools uh, monetary tools okay not policy monet monetary policy tools so this is the issue liquidity rises in the market then rbi will sell government securities if liquidity comes down then rbi will buy the government securities so this is how they are managing the liquidity scenario and uh, in the first malaysia's constitutional monarchy is there and uh, the king he abdicated his throne out of some medical trouble so this may be asked okay 
Next, Taiwan ruling party. Uh, two, three uh, days back, we saw that President Tsai Ing-wen, who took a firm stand against China, she said that we are never going to be integrated with uh, China. We are a separate land. China is a different land. There is no freedom in China, so it's totally unacceptable accept, acceptable to us. Okay, and uh, unacceptable to us, not acceptable. Okay, so it was a firm stand. So out of fear, the party change its chief now and uh, he is a moderator kind of a person he is a moderate man he is not a very much aggressive person like the previous president so these are the news i tried my best yes uh, tomorrow we will discuss the mcqs and all today it was a huge uh, day so many articles were there and one article is left we will discuss it tomorrow thanks a lot keep watching it was amit sani